and welcome to the MBS Show Reviews. I am your host, Norman Tenzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. I don't know how to feel about that. What do you mean? Introductions or... Anything. I have no strong opinion today. I've oh gone god. neutral. <laughs> oh god, no. Oh god. What's happened? Oh, and also joining us is Sapphire Heart Song. Everything you know is wrong. Your opinion is not fact. My opinion is fact. Opinions are not fact to begin with. So anywho, in today's episode, we are going to review... Season 7, Episode 14, Fame and Misfortune. We, this episode, uh, when Twilight Sparkle published her and her friend's friendship journal, it has unintended consequences when ponies start to argue over who wrote the best lessons. Uh, so, before we officially start, first impressions are in order. And Silver, what do you think, man? Oh boy, this was by, by far the most controversial episode of the season. Because to many people, this is a, a jab at the Brony fandom, a criticism of them. And then as we learned much a little bit later, M.A. Larson stated at both a Brony Can panel that was recorded and put on YouTube. And I got to talk to him at Nightmare Nights Dallas. He disavows this entire episode. He wants nothing to do with it. He is not proud of it and feels no need to defend it. And yet, strangely enough, I don't hate this episode. Uh, there are actually some things I, I think, yeah, oh, that that makes a good point. Or I see this happening in real life, not just in the Brony fandom, but in any fandom ever. And so by no means my favorite, and I wouldn't go out of my way to see it again. But there are some things I could point to and say, yeah, that's something to keep in mind. All right. All right. And Sappy, what about you? Well... This episode, like, I found it, like, a fun jab at first, like, when I was, uh, watching it, like, um, my boyfriend, Monk, come and ended up, uh, showing me the episode at the hotel room because I was working for a certain bird who was sitting over there. <laughs> cheep, 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 cheep. <laughs> Honestly, one of my most fond memories is when Silver, during his panel for, uh, what was it? The di dissecting of the Mary Sue? Yes. Yes, I, I was basically the only friend who brought their boyfriend, who was also a friend, who made it to the panel. Anyways. Ah! <laughs> one of my favorite moments, like, after watching that episode, was when Silver decided to bring up something about, like, Twilight's wings. And I just had to hold in every ounce of fiber I could to not spoil the episode for him. Because he mentioned that, and that was one of the main complaints that somebody yelled in the background, and it was just great. Anyways, about the episode itself, um, the episode itself can be, eh. Like, I did have some point where it's like, I am now ashamed of myself. In certain aspects, but then there were points where it was like, ha, huh, fun, yet laughable. <laughs> All right. But also, lots and lots of shame. Okay. Oh, God, no. So, as for me, this episode was interesting because I have heard this kind of conversation before. I've heard people say a lot of things about, well, uh, for example, like, oh, Twilight was better without the wings. Rainbow Dash is the coolest rarity, it's the worst. Why does it Fluttershy learn her lesson? And why does she need repeating? And I've heard from a lot of people this kind of saying and it's how to put this. It can get naggy at some point. It can get um it's pull you down. I, I'm yes, it weighs you down sometimes when you hear a lot of this and makes you want to kind of give up. So, when this episode comes out, not knowing the full context of the show with the previews and whatnot, I thought this is going to be one of those, oh my, now that Princess Twilight is popular, everybody wants to be her friend. Ah ha ha, ah ha, yay. But no, it was something else. Something really surprising and something really fun. First opinion on it, hearing all the background ponies discuss and kind of debate which is the best pony, which is the best lesson, totally missing the point of the whole journal itself. Very funny. <laughs> Very funny that they totally missed the point. 
uh, which I'm going to hold a bit until we kind of reach the end where we can discuss more. So if you guys have not watched this episode yet, I do recommend that you go watch this just because so you can enjoy it for yourself and judge it for yourself. And welcome back. So we start off with Twilight trotting around Ponyville until suddenly she got creamed. Oh no. Oh my. Oh my. Jinx. Jinx. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the culprit is Tularula. Oh no. Tularula, Tularula, I am. Just keep singing. Come on, Eileen. Oh no. So Tularula here um, is having a fight with her best friend or ex-best friend, Coconut Cream. Um, they didn't really say what they disagreed in, but they were just having ice cream fight. Ooh, that's cool. That's very cool. Oh, but one of them's going to end up creamed. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, bad. That's bad. I expect better from you, old man. <laughs> oh, I know. That's that's some pretty vanilla humor. <laughs> uh, I was hoping for some... You know, I got no no good ice cream plans to put in here. I'm going down a rocky road. It's uh, it's a shaky path. <laughs> uh, You're both lucky. I like puns. My God. <laughs> hey. uh, so, anywho, Twilight says, "Stop fighting and let me lecture you." Hey, Twilight's most effective power and skill. It always rolls a twenty and is oh, super effective. After the lesson, she said a line. Uh, what was it? So you see, friendship isn't always easy, but there's no doubt it's worth fighting for. And she felt like there's deja vu. Well, I should hope so. She's quoting the entire ep- episode. <laughs> What's the episode? Uh, that is from the season two premiere, Return of Harmony. And in my uh, eyes, looking back, one of the best uh, premieres we've seen thus far. Yes. I, I, I think so. I mean, I need to watch all the premieres to kind of debate that, but still, from just out of my memory, I think, yeah, that's a good one. Uh, but anywho, um, Twilight goes back to the library and tries to find the book she read that line from. And it was from her journal, the friendship journal that she and her friend wrote and totally... Uh, snub Celestia in writing emails to her. <laughs> yeah, you know, do you kind of, I kind of picture Celestia just sitting in her tower looking at shelves marked season one, season two, season three, and then empty shelves for the, all the others and just sighing dejectedly, <laughs> lonely. Uh, I, I have to bring something up here. Um, Emily Larson in the Bruni Ken panel or in the Bruni Ken interview he did. Mentioned that his original vision for the startup of the scene was uh, Celestia, Twilight, and who was it? I don't really remember who. Talking about um, something and suddenly someone brought the journal up and uh, Celestia was very salty about the journal. <laughs> so, oh yes, the thing you wrote in instead to me. Hmm. <laughs> and nobody really pay attention. Uh, I would have loved to see more uh, of Snooty Celestia or Salty Celestia. <laughs> Well, if uh, Royal Problems any any hint, it'd be Valley Girl Celestia. Ah, <laughs> ah, uh, uh, you you don't write me anymore, Shaw. <laughs> uh, but still, uh, getting back right on track, Twilight shows the journal to Starlight, and Starlight says, "You, this book is old and smelly." And well. Uh, there, there's need a revamp. They need a rebinding. They need a reprint. So, <laughs> how this old is, is the book, though? Can't be more than a year or two old. And Twilight, yeah. with her meticulous care, you'd think she'd be freaking out at how maligned it turned out. Uh, true that. Uh, but she has a lot of books. You know what? I'm not gonna even question it because Larson doesn't even care about this episode. So let's not nitpick to that extent. So, anywho. Twilight invites all of her friends to the castle and shows them the book. And yes, with Starlight's reaction, every pony there has the same reaction too, until Pinky points out that, hey, isn't this the friendship journal we wrote before, like way back when before Twilight had the castle? 
yeah, this is it. Like, yeah. Nostalgia. Very fun. Why would you slap a an apple in a book? Apples. Applejack. <laughs> it's apples. I'm... Don't you know? I could understand if you, like, taped an apple skin that had been laminated or somehow preserved. But, but just why would smearing... you an apple? <laughs> yes! You're, you're giving too much credit to Applejack in doing more work than it needs. So, no. But this is Apple Applejack, the hardest working pony. Although I know none of us are actually questioning the Pinkie Pie's confetti explosions. It's Pinkie Pie. You just don't question it. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Uh, but still, uh, you, you had Rainbow Dash with her furious writings to Rarity using calligraphy to Fluttershy writing a small section because, oh, I, I, I thought that people, other people might want to use the page. So uh, I was kind of thinking of others. So, yay. Hey, at least Rarity was writing a real language. <laughs> or not real language. Real writing. Uh, yes. But with that. Twilight says that, hey guys, uh, let's make multiple copies of this book. Like, you know, so we can all uh, keep one and preserve it or something like that, you know, for funds. And you know what? Why don't I publish this? Make it a bestseller and get loads of cash. <laughs> ah, not really. Uh, Has ruined a nutshell. Indeed. So everybody agrees to the idea of uh, publishing the journal so everyone can learn Friendship lessons. Yes, that's it. Friendship lessons. Not Totally not money. Totally not money. Okay, I think we can safely say that Twilight has infinite spending abilities as she's never had to work for cash in a single episode. Uh, probably th- th- that we know of. I, I figure she's either cancel at nobility based on her parents or being Celestia's pupil for a time meant mucho dinero. <laughs> Or, since she's a princess now, uh, she's getting royalty or getting, um, what you call this, allowance. So, anywho, Twilight goes to Cloudsdale, to Manhattan, and to other places around Equestria to sell her books. And it seems that her books are a bestseller. Although, let's also pause just to say that Twilight could basically wreck the Equestrian publishing uh, economy. Because she has a spell that can divide one book up into six, seven even. And without any printer, publisher, or uh, purchasing of inks and materials. So basically, every equestrian publisher is looking at their new princess and going, revolution. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't notice that. Oh yeah, yeah. God. Well, when you put that into account, yes, it does spoil the market for publishers. Yes, there's publishers for a reason. Or wait, wasn't it Starlight Glimmy Glam who made, cast the spell? Therefore, the publishers are looking at the princess's pupil as well and going, <laughs> kill the intruder. Death to the invader. I, Doom. I, I <laughs> Doom. Doom. <laughs> I doubt it, but still, um, uh, Twilight goes to the Ponyville school and Gives away free copies of the book. I don't see money transferring, so yeah, it should be free copy then. Yeah, so Silver's right. Doom. Doom. <laughs> Doom! <laughs> so, while handing over the books, Twilight hears an argument going on. And that argument is between Tularu and Coconut Cream again. And they're having a disagreement about playing hopscotch. And Twilight goes, yo, dogs, I have this book. Go read the chapter on Rainbow Dash. It's called Rainbow Falls, something like that. Yeah, go, go read it. Go read it. Well, personally, I feel like they, this argument is e- easily settled. You just mix the hops <laughs> with the scotch and enjoy a more okay, powerful no, drink. No, 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 no. Yes, 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 yes. So Twilight goes back to see the CMCs promoting themselves because uh, it seems that said book is escalating their popularity. So, yay? I don't see how that's possible. They're six times national saviors. You'd think that would be enough. Oh, popularity is a fickle mistress. Ain't it the truth, brother? Ain't it the truth? So, with the book out, the CMCs have decided to make some kind of cutie mark camp. Hmm, I wonder where this will go. Well, it will will lead to treachery, most foul. (laughs) Uh, We shall soon... A young cult who has emotional issues. <laughs> Probably. Uh, but anywho, 
Twilight is a bit concerned about the use of the book. She never intended the book to be used for popularity or marketing. She always intended the book to be something wholesome, like the sharing of friendships and lessons. Starlight comforts her by saying that oh, it ain't that bad. It's just a fluke, right? Yeah, let's go. Let's go to the castle and relax. Have some tea or something like that. And they get intercepted by some random ponies. Like, literally, they are totally random ponies. And I think this is the first time I'm seeing them. And they came all the way from... Uh, where was it again? Van Hoover, was it? Or was it... Was it from Van Hoover? Because I feel like I already made the damn joke. I think it was Man Manhattan. Man- Manhattan? Yeah, Manhattan. Manhattan. Yeah. Really, really, Safi, get your horse puns straight. I'm tired. Yeah, but next should be telling me you have the case of the trots. But anywho, Twilight's surprised by their visit and everybody's really hype. And Twilight's kind of happy. They came all the way from Manhattan to, well, see her about books. And when Twilight asks which was your favorite lesson, they kind of stop her and ask her to sign the book. And, you know, Twilight is being Twilight, says, I don't mind, uh, I'll sign the copy because, yeah, you know, um, I kind of published this book and stuff. And she asks again, um, which is your favorite lesson? Uh, one of the quotes says, uh, you know, I, I haven't read it, man. Like, I, I'm just uh, wanting to seal this and keep the collector's value. Yay! Also, we were all wrong. I checked the transcript, and these these strange ponies are from Philadelphia. Ah. No, I know it was we- from the city area. I just didn't know which. So they have no cheesesteak in this story. Aww. <sighs> but um, <laughs> but anywho, uh, Twilight is feeling dejected of this. While Starlight is trying to cheer Twilight up, they pass by a restaurant and hearing some pony discuss about the book. Oh, yes. Not a fancy story. Let's hear what they think about the books and whatnot. And Twilight overheard them discussing about rarity and how she's kind of not the... How 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 do I put this? Certainly she did a fine job setting up the Ponyville Day celebration. But does she really believe it was a success just because of her? A wise pony once said, be careful... <laughs> Uh, but still, um, they're bad mouthing Rarity and saying that she's the worst. And Rarity hears this and she cries. <laughs> she she has Not an em- <laughs> she has an emotional breakdown. And um, Twilight goes after her Why while, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Starlight stays behind to you know have a word with those two. And by word, I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, let's just say that they ain't going to be walking straight for a while. Ooh, I thought she was just going to brainwash them. Oh, no, man. Like, you know, kneecaps. <laughs> Although, do you think these two probably represent what most people think of online reviewers? A little bit elitist, yeah. a little bit stuck up, denouncing a character. <laughs> oh, we're so special. <laughs> <laughs> You know what, Silver? Probably. I, I'm not 100% sure because uh, there's a whole bit of the fandom in this one. Like, the first people that were involved with the story, uh, for example, the people from Philadelphia, they were kind of collectors. They don't really care about the work. They just want to get things signed so they can sell it at a high price later. That happens. That's why most professional racers are a bit salty about signing things without putting a name on it. And with the second set of ponies here, the quote-unquote snobby ponies, they're kind of, well, some reviewers that were out there or are still out there who thinks that certain characters are trash. Some reviewers, like this set here, they do exist and it's kind of hard to denounce because they exist and you know what some people do enjoy their highbrow or sophisticated kind of reviewing style so anywho let's carry on with the review while like I mentioned before Twilight chases after Rarity and and Pinkie Pie does a tackle to Twilight yes uh, it's been a while since we see this and this reminds me of Tigger remember way back in the day with Winnie the Pooh and Tigger this always happens. Oh, the wonderful things about Tiggers. Is, is Tiggers a wonderful thing? 
<laughs> yes. Probably blah blah. Uh, but Who knows what, what the hell he said? <laughs> you're you're too you're too young to remember this, aren't you? I've seen Winnie the Pooh. I remember the song. I just can't word it like he does. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure, youngin. Uh, but but anywho, carrying it on, um, Pinkie Pie tells Twilight that hey, look at everyone. Uh, isn't this awesome? They came from all over the country and liked my jokes. <laughs> uh, pudding! And everyone laughs. And so begins her torment. Yeah. Isn't it funny that since we mentioned the Return of Harmony, Discord drove her to tears with me laughter. Now that she's having to deal with canned laughter. Yeah, I, I think she's kind of weirded out by it because everything she says is funny and I, I'm not 100% sure which part of the fandom this is poking at because I don't see this that much. Have you seen this? Honestly, I think it's more just the idea of people going along with the show at the sacrifice of free will. Uh, it's sort of like the people who say every episode is great regardless of what happened in it. Of course, I, I should note that I am projecting or trying to guess who is meant to be represented when it's just, it, it may just be ponies laughing for no reason. Oh yeah, that, that's true. But like I was going to mention before, the reason why Amy Larson didn't like this and kind of denounce this episode is because it was noted or mandated by Hasbro on how to write this story. Like every little detail on this episode was noted by Hasbro. You should do this. You should do that. You should do something like this. You should do something like that. And Larson even told Hasbro that, uh, that's a bad idea. Like, you're gonna get people angry with this. And Hasbro said, we don't care! Ah! We also don't really know how the dialogue went back and forth or how big it changed. They may have been very broad statements, but mm. there was one thing that Mitch said at Nightmare Nights that I found very fascinating. Oh. He asked, and this is important to this scene in particular, why are we turning all the background ponies whom we've, we, who fans have grown to love into jerks? And while the book signers from Philadelphia were new designs, mm -hmm. while, while, uh, the elitist ponies talking about rarity were new designs, these were all ponies that knew Pinkie Pie for years and they're acting bizarre. How different would this episode have been received if all of the complaining or nitpicky ponies were new designs. That would have worked. In all honesty, that would have worked because these ponies don't really know them too well. Like, they don't really know the main six too well. Okay, for example, um, you, Silver, and you, Sappy. You guys are well known in your community and you guys have a lot of fans behind you. Sadly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when it comes to people like visiting BronyCon and they don't really know you that much, they don't really talk to you, they only see your videos and whatnot, they get really excited and they get really giddy. So they don't really personally know you. But for me and some other few people who know you guys personally, I wouldn't be that giddy. I would like, oh god, there's a silver playing it up. Oh, mm, all right. Actually, I think you'd be more like, now I will have my revenge upon you. <laughs> <clears throat> Probably. But still, the facts there, like, these ponies in Ponyville know them too well and I kind of agree with what Mitch says because wouldn't it be better if they just imported new ponies that were not local to Ponyville? Yeah. But then you won't get the joke of you know me for years. Which let's be yeah. honest, that was pretty funny. Yes, indeed. Yeah, that was. That was funny. At the same time, here's the funny thing. Mitch Larson very much does not want to defend this episode. He has no great love or loyalty towards it. I'm still sort of, eh, it is, it has its fun moments. Mm -hmm. Oh, true that. I think he just doesn't want to hurt anyone. Yeah. And I don't blame him. I mean, yeah, everybody jokes about, oh, you shouldn't be afraid to hurt people's feelings and blah, blah, blah. At the same time, there are still some <clears throat> eggshells you need to walk on, despite, you know, you shouldn't walk on every... Or you shouldn't stomp on every eggshell. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I understand. Oh, yeah. And the thing oh, is, yeah. like, for Mitch, he has the right to kind of hate the, this episode while other people enjoy it. And here's the thing. 
when it comes to artists, especially content creators, let's go for content creators. It's a much broader stroke. So when it comes to content creators, they will hate some content that they make while others enjoy it. Like, for example, me and my content, the show that I do, the podcast, I do not like the first few episodes that I did. It's one of those things where uh, younger me did not know how to do stuff and younger me was trying to be something that he is not. And listening back to it again is kind of cringy. And yeah, I don't like it, but some other people do. So to each their own. I'm sure you have the same thing, Silver. Oh, constantly. I hear my old uh, audio uh, in some of my old videos and just like, good lord. I was trying to talk like Yahtzee of zero punctuation at one point. <laughs> trying to talk re- really, really fast. And that did not work. It did not work. Yep. It takes time to find our own style and whatnot. And yeah, this reflects back to Larson again, where he didn't really enjoy the content that he wrote because he know he can do better and knowing the outcome of this yeah you know nah and knowing this half the battle G.I. Joe <laughs> uh, and let's head off to the next scene and well we all know that there's an awesome pony out there that is really awesome she's the fastest and coolest out there and you know what I got no idea how to go into this because Rainbow Dash is kind of avoiding the whole awesomeness. <laughs> she has her own fan club and whatnot. I, I know that she had one before, but now that she's popular, she's kind of hating it. <laughs> or she's at least hating the two fans who won't back off, who won't give her some room to breathe and do her job. But let's also admit that it, as frustrated as the main six are, there's one pony who's more furious than any. Oh, who's that? Daring Do. Because uh-huh. Rainbow Dash just spilled the beans to everyone that AK Yearling is daring do. Did she? Well, the, as I recall, the story re- revolved around her discovering that AK Yearling is daring do and she was going into hero worship. And the, the Phillies even mentioned, you help daring do in that sometimes adorable speech impediment. Mm-hmm. No, it, it's not adorable. It's annoying after a while. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. Uh, but but still, um, you know, honestly, I didn't really catch on that. But still, um, Rainbow Dash doesn't want the fan club anymore, and Twilight is kind of oh god, rolling her eye this again, and she flies over Ponyville to see that a bunch of ponies are crowding one pony, and it looks like they're going to beat her up. The Princess of Friendship can't do that, and she spots a Fluttershy. Hey, what? Why is everybody? Bullying Fluttershy. That's the dumbest thing to do. Don't you know? Oh, don't you know, hey? <laughs> oh, don't you know? Indeed. Uh, but the reason why you shouldn't bully Fluttershy is simple. Discord. He will destroy you. Indeed. <laughs> uh, but... Yeah. Well, I, I will say, of all the ponies in this uh, in this episode, I think this is the ones I can point at and say, oh, that guy. That guy's me. The guy who's like... Why won't she be assertive? She be assertive. Huh. I don't know how to feel about that. <laughs> what? It's like, it's like, oh, you're such a jerk, and yet I identify with you. What does that say about me? <laughs> you're a jerk, too. It, you're a jerk to your waifu. That's right. I'm a jerk foo. <laughs> uh, but still, when they all group up and want to know why Flazzy Shai keeps learning the same lesson over and over again, and... Well, you know what? Flutterstrike man up and tells the reason. And you know what? The, the the phrase that one of the ponies says that we deserve to know um, why. I mean, like, wow, you deserve to know. Really now, who are you again? Well, there's an old saying, God help us all if we really get what we deserve. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. But still. Do we address, like, the um the one pony? Which one? Oh, the one with with the glass. Oh, you Oh, you've heard people talk about this. I know what she I know what you're talking about, Safi. <laughs> so, all right, let's deal let's just deal with this directly, shall we? All right, because I'm confused. Which one are you talking about? The female pony in the group, the one with the very stylized hair, mane. Uh-huh. 
the one who says we deserve to know. Some fans, including Lily Pete herself, are claiming that's meant to represent her. Huh? Specifically. Because, because even though she doesn't look like Lily, doesn't sound like Lily, her OC is not colored, the same as Lily's pony Sona, it's the fact that she has a glass of water cutie mark. Now, I view that as a glass half empty. Lily is trying to claim, Lily is trying to claim ownership of, of a resource used in the show long before she started doing videos. In other words, she's saying any glass of water is meant to represent me. Except she took that image from the show itself. I think it's rather silly to say this is all about me and that I'm being called out specifically. That's conferring too much power upon oneself. And here's where I go to make a point where you're missing the point of the episode. Well, that's a, that's a separate accusation leveled against Lily. There are many fallacies against Lily, but that's for another day. Probably yeah. never. Anyways. <laughs> Probably never. I don't think, like, any character, like, the new designs or characters in the show is meant to represent anybody. Just a main group. It's more or less a stereotype. If you want to be really nitpicky about colors and OCs, if you take a look-see at one of the ponies that is being levitated by Starlight, his mane and coat tone is similar to the Living Tombstone. Does that make that pony the Living Tombstone? I don't think so. No. If it is, does that mean you knocked him dead? <laughs> uh, you know, I don't. I don't get the sense that any character. The closest I've ever seen to having a fandom personality represented was uh, that hench pony who looked a little bit like a uh, dusty cat, but, or who didn't have a line and may have gotten eaten by an alligator off yeah. screen, or the Mexican band that played something. I, I don't remember what was that episode again. A Mexican band? You mean it ain't easy being breezies? I think so. There's a mariachi band going on. I, I forgot which episode was it, but it was there in the background playing some mariachi songs or something like that. And Dusty Cat kind of said, hey, that looks like me. Oh, and then there were the hench ponies to the maniac that looked like uh, Cosmo Logic. But all of this is coincidental. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And if you want to be really coincidental, remember in the equestrian game where uh, the one pony who shot the arrow to the clouds? Remember that pony? Yeah. Almost looked like my OC. Norman, have you been dealing with archery again? You know uh, we talked about that. You know I like Hanzo. You you can't blame me, man. Oh, I can most certainly blame you for using Hanzo, yo, Pete. So, so. <laughs> But anyway, back on track. Oh God, how did we feel too bad? Only, uh, anyway, anyway. Um, so I, I can't let of... this. I can't let this go. Is it, you're a Hanzo player. I thought we were friends, Norman. <laughs> and you're a Genji user. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. I'm yes. still coming up. <laughs> oh, you're sadistic. Oh, but anywho. <clears throat> Anime. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, Anime, <laughs> Christy. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, I want to get through this. If I can. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so Tisha defends her point, and everybody is kind of surprised, but still rags on her. She feels dejected and goes back to her home, while Starlight and Twilight goes to Rarity to spot a crazy-looking Rarity. Oh my God, she cracks again. Oh God, no. It's finally happened. It <laughs> yes. broke her again. Yes. Crazy again. Rarity is cool Rarity. I like Crazy Rarity. I'm wearing my emotions. <laughs> uh, and with this, she says that now she finally understands why a lot of her orders were being cancelled. And it's all because of the stupid journal. Oh no. And there's a lot of protests what, what, outside. What? Okay, okay. I have to complain about that right there. You're canceling orders from somebody just because of their publications in a book. Now, I understand losing business because you're not a good character in a book or something like that. I don't know. Like, later on. But to upright cancel orders that you've already commissioned just because you don't like the person. It does make sense. Like, some people can do that. Like... I don't want to I mean, be associated yeah, with yeah, this person. Yeah, you can, but still, it's like, dang. I mean, 
you go to this person because they're you like their work. It doesn't mean you have to like them. Yeah. I mean, some of them are actually really, really pretentious, and people will actually put up with it because of their art being that good. Now, as a person, I would question putting up with that person just because you like that work, like their work, but. If you hired them to do work for you, then, I don't know, maybe they shouldn't matter unless they work in retail. I mean, Seppi, what, what you're saying is kind of true, but at the same time, too, some people have that feeling. I mean, a very good example of this scenario that you're mentioning, Seppi, and it's recent, is Jason David Frank, the guy who played Tommy, the Green Ranger. He was at a recent con, um, I forgot which con was it, and he had to share his green room or the green room with um, John Claude Van Damme. And those two didn't see eye to eye on things. He, he didn't feel right about it. But you know what? He's kind of being the bigger man and kind of let him come in. John Claude Van Damme kind of want to meet him for a picture or something like that. And Jason David Frank went says, yeah, you know what? Why not? Maybe you can bury the hatches and move on. But once he was there, he knew it was a setup, and it uh, it didn't look too well. No. Hmm. I'm more referring to like, oh yeah, you have to put up with somebody like for a little oh, bit, like he, at he, a he, con he, table. No. 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 Just, no, just no, the no, things no. I be. Just the things I be. What Jason said is this: he dislikes um, John. He really dislikes him because of his attitude and personality, but he loves his work. Um, all the movies that he did, he likes them. Uh, as a person, nah, he's trash. That's what he thinks. So, he kind of accepts that his work is good, I'm gonna like his work, but I'm not gonna like the guy. Hmm. Well, yeah, you can do that. Okay, Norman, Norman. I'm talking about, like, these ponies beforehand conscientiously hired Rarity to oh. do some work for them. True, true that. You I know, mean, for, that's... like, dresses and whatnot. That's it, that's it, that's it. Then, you know, after the book came out, they decide, oh, I don't like this person anymore, and straight up just cancel orders. What does Rarity do with all the material that she's worked on beforehand? But here's like, the thing, Seppi. Like, I, I do understand your point. She doesn't have the chance to finish the dress because nobody will pay for it. I mean, I, I do understand your point. It's a waste of material. True. I, I, see, I understand your point there. But at the same time, too, uh, if you know a person who does well if you if you knew this person he's a really bad guy probably on the watch list for some reason and says like no i don't want to be associated with this person because this person is on the watch list so i am not going to be associated with this person at least let the person finish the dress and then like not wear it no i don't want to give my money to you i don't want to support you at all you see, some people are like that, and this is a matter of principle for them. And I think we're kind of sidetracking to another point. Silver, you want to say anything to put this one, please? <laughs> kind of track or something like that. Well, mostly I'm just uh, I'm just looking through, trying to remember if I already said that they were canceling orders on her. Yes, they did. Well, my goodness, they're boycotting her. Uh, well, hang on. Boycotting means you're not buying stuff from her. It doesn't mean that necessarily that they've canceled current orders. Uh, but okay. pers personally, if I find someone to be morally reprehensible or I just don't enjoy how they're treating others, normally I do my best to limit contact with them, including not watching their videos or not watch, not requesting their services. That's just the way it is. Uh, if however, I, uh, if I had a product or project in the works and I'd commission them, I'd probably see it through because I want to be responsible about that. Not because of them, but because that's who I, the person I want to be. But anywho, anywho. And here's the line, Silver. When I overheard those two at the cafe, I suddenly understand why I've been getting cancellations for days. Starlight Glimmer, ah. but why are ponies cancelling this order? Squeak. So yeah, um, Rarity's getting cancellation and she's frustrated by this. Rubbish reasoning all around. Uh, but we, uh, we go to the opposite stage though. Applejack is popular. Oh god no. Oh no. 
Oh no. Oh no. And she's it, not taking it too it, well. It's not it's not physically possible. Applejack's supposed to be the background pony and all those other tired jokes. I know. She's supposed to be the kind of like ha <laughs> uh Apple Who now? <laughs> uh but no. It seems that ever since the publishing of the journal, um a lot of people kind of click with Applejack and felt like they're part of the family. Applejack's been popular and you know what? I, I have to put down my fist here or I have to say something here. They're not family members. They're just freeloaders. Pretty much, yeah. You bunch of freeloaders. Get off my lawn! Although Applejack could sing, borrow a song from Rarity about becoming popular. <laughs> popular. I'm gonna make you popular. Oh, boy. <clears throat> Although I can't really see uh, Applejack calling herself the bell of the ball. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely but st- not. But still, Applejack is popular because reasons and everybody wants to take pictures with her everybody wants the hospitality and whatnot and things are not going easy for her and with this twilight feels even more dejected and heads to the castle and stares longingly at the window (laughs) starlight comes in and says oh no the window stare this is not good and twilight says i feel responsible for publishing the book All, all my friends are having a bad time this is not what was meant to happen. I thought publishing the book would make people become closer and better friends. Not this. Which is kind of funny. If anything, I view this as a book, the tale of a self-published author. You put your work out there, you you hope it'll have a positive impact. Maybe we all daydream that we'll become a national bestseller and change the world. Mm -hmm. But rarely do we consider that human beings have different opinions and you're going to get, no matter what you do, you're going to get backlash. That's true. I guess that's why I actually appreciate most about this episode. There's a certain frustrating but brutal honesty to it. And a book that you mentioned, Silver, that's something that went popular. Fifty Shades of Grey. Oh, God. Well, it did change the world. Yep. You didn't say for the better. It made everybody yeah. realize not to kink shame each other. <laughs> <laughs> but Twilight didn't realize that and yeah, everybody's having a bad time. And they're complaining to Twilight about their grievances. And Fluttershy is cranky. Cranky Fluttershy is cranky. Crankishy. Didn't we see that in a different episode, though? Uh, like no. from season six? Did oh, we? She, well, well, she was cranky with Pinkie Pie uh, for scaring her bird friends with explosives. Oh, I was more talking about the uh, buckball season thing. Oh well, that that was that was freak out shy, uh, and yeah. freak out shy is always fun. Yep, true. I don't know how to feel about that. <laughs> uh, but but anywho, Starlight says, you know what? I I got something to do. Like I I know the right person to deal with your emotional turmoils. Give me a few minutes, and with that, Twilight says, you know what, girls? I I can't stand no more. And I how how does Papa say? You know the line, Silver? Let's see it. What is it? I've, I've had all I can stand and I can't stand no more? Yes, thank you. That's the line. I can't wait any longer. I've got to fix this, is what she actually says. But I like her saying it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but she goes out the door and tells the ponies that you guys are being such big jerks. And a reporter comes in and says to Princess Twilight, uh, let's see, reporter pony, Princess Twilight, I'm with the kinds of the Chronicles. A quick question. What would you say to ponies who wonder why you moved to Ponyville in the first place? What? Yeah, they asked that question. Indeed. Oh, no, I, I'm talking about, like, how Twilight would react to that. Oh, no, she reacted to this. I moved here to learn about friendship. That's why the journal exists. It took some time for me to get the hang of it, but it was each and every pony standing here next to me who taught me the lesson in those journals, Applejack, Pinkie, Pirate, Rainbow, Dash, and Fluttershy, too. Then it was all for you to learn so much from... What I mean is, some ponies would argue that it doesn't seem believable that the six of you would be friends. <laughs> uh, 
And it goes on. Uh, Twilight says believable. Well, sure. I read this journal cover to cover, and I hear to say your character would have been much more interesting if she stayed in Tantalot. Oh my god. Oh, and then that was great. <laughs> Twilight's like, my character, I'm a real pony. Nobody tell her. <laughs> Uh, and here's where I kind of face pump and sigh because I've heard that line before. Where you that she she should have stayed in Canter a lot. No, where X character would be better in X situation or X place. Oh, that sounds exciting. <laughs> yes, and you know what? <sighs> we all do that. We we all do that. We theorize that scenario would be much better if. Things would happen like this or things would to happen like that. And the reason why we say those kind of things because we know it's a show. But for the ponies to say it here, that's just silly. You're so silly. You're mm-hmm. silly, Billy. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. And the ponies or the background ponies here argue and argue and argue. And I have to give it to this one guy who looks like um, Caramel. He says, I'll be eaten by an apple, check me later or what? And I'm yeah. still kind of, I'm, I'm still marveling. That's actually a thing with people. Well, is kind it kind of because are they? I mean, it was back in like season four, but no. <laughs> no, 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 it's it's very vague because there's no real answer to it, and that's why people are asking about it. And you know what? I would like to know the real answer too, but I'm not going to chase down people asking for it. <sighs> and with that, Twilight uses her candle voice and starts a really nice song. This song is nice. I like it. It is a good song. I enjoy it. <laughs> Seppi, you like the song? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Well, what can we say? I mean, it's a good song. After they finish, uh, Twilight tries to put on the lesson thing. And in all honesty, I would have thought that everybody would clap and kind of understand. It's like, oh, yeah, how we are so dumb. We shouldn't be doing this. Oh, Princess Twilight, you're right. Nope, they continue arguing. Which may actually be more true to life. Oh, uh, yeah, true that. <laughs> but this is my little pony. You would have expected that some uh, happy frou-frou thing would be happening. But no, no, no. They all they all seem to argue again. In truth, I like that they didn't just go for the clean, everything's wrapped up, everyone's friends again ending. Because, you know, life, you're going to run into some folks who are hard, hard-headed or holdouts. And, yeah... Some days you just got to accept what you can change and what you can't. Mm-hmm. And in the end, they go back into the castle feeling dejected and Starlight Grimmer brings two fillies to meet them. And that's Tularu and Coconut Cream. And they mention that we're much better friends because of the book. Like, thank you so much for that. And Twilight felt that with all this trouble... Having you say that and having you become much closer friends because of the book is all worth it. And everybody feels the same. Even though they still have to deal with the outside menace. Oh, yeah. Well, that's future them's problem. We, we're, we're not going to ruin the moment right now. <laughs> Although they never see anyone uh, again, so I'm guessing Discord came through and pile drive everybody. Oh, you know what? Two situations could have happened. Either Discord or Starlight. Um, use some kind of memory erasing spell. Yes, that's that's my head cannon. <laughs> head cannon accepted. Yay! And episode ends. <laughs> that's uh, why. That's why daring do has not been outed yet. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. And yeah, what can we say? This episode was enjoyable, but oh, there's a lot of wow. Where do I even start? Silver, uh, should we go to final thoughts or do you want to discuss some more? I feel like we've discussed as much as we can. This is going to demand a reaction for everyone, whether maybe you agree. I've seen definitely seen some people vilify the Brony fandom in reaction to this uh, self-hating fan, so to speak. Yeah. I've seen some self-hating fans. I've seen people denounce the show and the show writers for being so petty. I myself, one, I saw this with friends at BronyCon. And we all had a good laugh, partly because we'd had whiskey beforehand. (laughs) What can I say other than it is what you want it to be? If you take offense from it, then maybe you feel like you're being negatively labeled. And if so, why? What Which character stands out the most as a reflection of what you think people 
would see you as. I identify with the, uh, I don't know how to feel about that pony. <laughs> uh, probably the same. I, I don't know. This episode, like, like I mentioned before, this episode is kind of divisive in what it was trying to tell in terms of storytelling. And it's a situation where you can either laugh at yourself for what they're trying to tell, or you can go really, really angry and unsatisfied with the episode. A lot of people are going with plan B, which is not the right plan. It's just a show. You shouldn't take it too seriously. And yet I do find it funny and maybe a little embarrassing that I'm agreeing more with the corporate side of things than the show writer, Mitch Larson, who's an awesome guy. Mostly because I feel like this is a reflection of the, the darker sides of fandoms. It's not the whole story, but it's part of it. And, well, um, what can I say? I, am I for one, here enjoy this episode for what it is. An episode. Not because it's kind of the whole, oh, uh, this is how bronies are. Oh, ha, ha. I like this episode because it puts the bronies in a negative flight. Oh, ha, 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 ha. No, that that ain't me. I I just like it because stupid ponies do stupid things. What about you, Sebi? You've been quiet. Once again, I think I conveyed all my feelings throughout the review. Yeah, it did kind of make me feel bad in some aspects. Like, I forgot exactly which aspect. But it's like, oh god, this is how the show staff views bronies. I'm out. Okay, if you think that, yes. But probably, I honestly, I don't think that, like... The staff people, from what I heard, that they enjoy us or they enjoy the Brunies. Because of us or because of the Brunies, they are well known now. Like, if you take a look see at other shows, who did what now? It's just a paycheck. With this one, at least you're getting recognition. And let's be honest, I've heard about some fandoms like, well, the Steven Universe fandom, which mm-hmm. have turned very hostile towards mm-hmm. the creative staff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's very. And what was it most recently? The Rick and Morty fandom came under criticism as people went crazy over Szechuan sauce at McDonald's. And you're just like, guys, you're still a part of the everyday world. Seek the balance. You can have opinions, but you don't have to be hostile about it. True. I mean, come on. It's just a show. At the end of the day, no matter what your opinion on said episode is, Hasbro got paid... The showrunners, the people who are involved got paid and everyone's, well, quote-unquote, happy with their job. Us, the audience, we could take it to the extreme or we can tone it down a bit. Say that, hmm, this episode offends me. I will not watch it anymore. Or, eh, it's just an episode. Let's go see what episode 15 is. You know, it's funny. At one point in this series, I actually did ponder, eh, maybe I should just stop watching. Oh, no. Uh, th- this was before I, I even did videos, I even before I was publishing comics. Uh, it was after I watched a Cantalot wedding. Ah. And I, I didn't enjoy it as much as others, so I thought to myself, you know, this is, at the end of the day, a show aimed at a young audience meant to promote toys. A Cantalot wedding was definitely a, a big t- toy sale in my eyes. So I thought, eh, maybe better just to let it go. Obviously, <laughs> I did not. <laughs> uh, oh, 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 you 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 didn't let it go. <laughs> eh. Funny enough, because of the fandom, because uh, one of my comic, my first comic on Equestria Daily, got a lot of positive re- feedback. And you know what? I thought, you know what? It is a show aimed at kids, meant to sell toys, but the fandom's something else. And I like the fandom. True that, and same here for me too. At the end of the day. It's what you make of it. And with that, Silver, what are we going to do next week? Oh, next week we're going to do something special. Something very special. Oh. We are going to have a talk about ethics in a children's cartoon. Oh, namely, no. pretending to mind control. Didn't you do that in a video, though? I did a little bit of that, but it's worth discussing all together now. Mm, true that. This one, you have the full table. There's no limitations to what you can say, quote-unquote. Yeah. Uh, but yes, we'll be doing that next week and that is a Patreon sponsored video. And talking about the Patreons, if you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you'll get early access to the review and discussion podcast, deleted content, and also exclusive 
and the exclusive for Patreon right now is a discussion about the movie, spoiler free. And also a huge thank you from me and talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Lurker Cat, Nandragatorius, Starstream, Master of Leg, and also Amy. Thank you guys for the awesome support. So anywho, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quill, but I don't know how to feel about that. <laughs> I am Sapphire Hartzog. And we'll guys catch you next week with another episode of the MBS show. See ya. Adios. Bye bye. Oh, I think the character of Silver Quill's not right. He should be more snooty. <laughs>